right in the center of the book of Revelation, you find a chapter that moves us forward in the book, but also points backward. Welcome to another tidbit from the last book of the Bible. I'm Dr. Paul Peterson, and today we're going to look at chapter 12 in the Apocalypse. What happens? When we take a look at what is told in this chapter, we realize that it moves us forward and also that it is composed like a chiasm, that is a reverse parallel labeled from the Greek letter chi. Let's look at it. The first three verses present us with two powers, the dragon and the woman. The next three cha verses, verses uh, 4 to 6, present us for the battle between the two. Then you have another battle between Michael and the dragon, that is, verses 7 to 9. Before that, you have a small insert telling that the woman will be let or she will be fleeing out into the wilderness. But then after the battle between Michael and the dragon, what you look at is a heavenly verdict. A high voice is declaring the result of the battle to the heavenly court. And after that, you begin the reversal. First you have, briefly, the result of the battle between Michael and the dragon. Then you have the flight into the wilderness mentioned by the woman. You have more detail about the battle between the woman and the dragon as you relate to the earlier part. And then you have finally the two powers again, the woman and the dragon, now at the time of the end. Now what are we to make out of such a structure? First we see that the main center of it all is the heavenly court declaration in verses 10 to 12. We will return to that in a little while. Next, you realize that the second part of the chiasm, that is from verse 13 and onwards, are describing prophetically historical events taking place on earth. However, the first part of the chapter are not actually taking place on earth. They are scenes of battle shown in heaven. Notice the beginning of the chapter, a great sign appeared in heaven, another great sign in heaven, when the dragon is introduced in verse 3. And in verse 7, when Michael and the dragon are fighting each other, this is a war taking place in heaven, and that war is commented upon by the heavenly tribunal, which means it is shown up there. So, looking back, now we have been looking forward, looking forward in a sense, seeing how the chapter moves us into the following, to the time of the end, to the last battle, which are to come a little later in the chap in, in the book. But now let's see how the chapter brings some of the elements from the previous visions together. Now, in the chapter, you, in a sense, complete, you cl close the visions of the trumpets. Many of the symbols from the trumpets are mentioned here. The woes, the sun, moon and star, the earth and sea. And of course, the third is a symbol also taking up in chapter 12, which you saw permeated all of the previous trumpets. And what you see now is the powers who are battling out those powers that are behind all the tribulations in the previous chapters. The woman, the church, is attacked by Satan himself, and Michael Christ is coming to the rescue. This is a fundamental battle between good and evil, which is underlining 
all the events of the trumpets. Now, looking back, in chapter 11, in the seventh trumpet, we had a heavenly scene, a heavenly court scene with singing, the elders, the 24 elders, the four living creatures, and we saw it illustrated judgment will begin, the door was opened into the most holy, the Ark of the Covenant became visible, we are in the face of judgment, God has taken over his throne, he has been proclaimed king along with the Lamb, and then what happens now is a continuation. We have singing, a liturgy, then we have the two battle scenes in chapter 12 between drag the dragon and the woman and between Michael and the dragon. And then framing those scenes are these heavenly voices, the heavenly singing. In chapter 12, the scene is concluded by this, and let me now read these central verses of the whole book, not only of the whole chapter. I heard, verse 10, a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony, the word of the testimony. And they did not love their lives even unto death. And then moving onwards. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. A reference to the saints. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So, singing, praising to God who is taking over his throne, is in the beginning of these two scenes in 11.15 to 18. And now singing again in the end frames these two examples of singing, frame the, the battles we are seeing. And the heavenly court is commenting on the battle between Michael and the dragon. So, all this is part of a heavenly judgment scene. Some people ask me, when was the devil thrown down? When was the accuser thrown down? Or when did Michael beat up the devil? In one sense, the answer is all the time. All the time. The presentations here are not primarily historical, they are shown in heaven. That is, they are part of the judgment scene. When you come to the time of judgment, the heavenly tribunal will look at the major points in the battle between good and evil. These points, these events will be shown in heaven as a foundation for the verdict. So therefore you have what could be called a poetical, mythical description of the battle. It's a symbolic battle. Now, that means that at the heavenly judgment scene, the major events of the great controversy will be presented. That will include the original creation and the fall in heaven, and most certainly it will include the cross and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ. That's where he, Jesus finally and eternally beat up, beat up the devil, overcome him. That's where Michael beat up the dragon. On that foundation, the saints can be saved. And that foundation is described this way once again. They have conquered, that is, they are victorious. It's a verdict of innocence or salvation by the heavenly court. They are victorious because of the blood of the Lamb, pointing back to the core 
cause of the salvation mentioned in the sixth seal. And by the word of their testimony, pointing back to the testimony, which was a central core of the victory of the saints throughout the trumpets. This is a foundation for the salvation. But it does not end here. The battle goes on. And that is then the unique thing. We have seen six trumpets. The seventh has, blum, has, has blown. The court is set. The declaration of salvation has sounded. That is a heavenly event far into the history of the church, but also before the second coming. So there is a heavenly event, a judgment scene taking place in heaven, far into church history, but before the second coming, before the last battle. And to that battle, we will return when we move into more tidbits from the book of Revelation. Thank you for listening to Tidbits from Revelation 12.